Well, hey there, I'm Jay. Welcome to my booth. So when I started off in voiceover, there was a ton of stuff that I just had no idea how to do, what I was doing with it. And a fundamental point for me was when I stopped thinking of myself as Jay Myers voiceover talent, and I started thinking of myself as small business owner and operator who provides the services of Jay Myers voiceover talent. And that little semantic shift was really, really helpful for me in terms of just reformatting how I approached a lot of stuff, namely client interactions and client experience, as well as the businessy side of things. A big side of that is invoicing your clients. So that's what I'm gonna to talk to you about today because it was a point that stressed me out and I had no idea how to do it. So I'm gonna walk you through a few tools that I use or have used to invoice my clients and then how you can get paid via those invoices so that it's easy for you and easy for your clients. If you have any questions about this or anything else voiceover related, you're always welcome to drop me a line below or reach out directly via my website. And if you're interested in one-on-one -on -one coaching, either for businessy stuff like this, or if you want to work on your commercial skills, your audiobook reading, whatever it may be, that's also available on my website if that's appealing to you. So invoicing at its essence is simply telling your client how much they owe you for your services and how to pay you. Simple as that. A great tool for it is any spreadsheet software. Google Sheets, Excel, Numbers, they're all easy to use and Google Sheets is free. All of them also have an invoice template available to anyone who uses them. You just click on the templates, invoice, boom, it pops up and is ready for you to use. Now with any invoice, it's really, really important in terms of your workflow and saving you time to have a blank template. And that's helpful for anything, whether it's invoices, contract agreements, uh, whatever it is. If you can save yourself work by having a sort of format that you can go back to, that's really, really helpful. So with this invoice, what I would do, I would go through and say, I would change the uh, color scheme to match the branding of my website. Let's make this gray. And then we'll change this to be a sort of gold color because that's what I have on my website. Same with this one, we'll make that gold. And I would go through this whole uh, invoice and just make sure the color scheme's right, maybe upload my logo to it. If you have a logo for your business, if you have a headshot that you like, that's great to put on there. In addition, anything on the invoice that's gonna be the same anytime you send it to any client, Type that in and save it in your template. So for here, we'll go J Myers v VO, that's the company name. My address, if you are working from home like I am, uh, you can put your home address there. If you're not comfortable doing that, you can use a proxy address like a PO box or just leave your email if that's all you wanna put up there. And then if the client needs the information for their accounting or keeping you on their books for whatever reason, and you don't want to leave it on the invoice, you can just wait for them to request it and provide it at your own discretion. I've never had an issue with it, so I just leave my address on my invoices to my clients. Next will be the payable to section. It's always gonna be you, so I'll just put uh, my company here. And the last thing that I would do is any notes. These are things like terms and conditions. If you have uh, things that weren't outlined in the contract, if you want to put something like refer to the contract. I also, which I'll talk about in a bit, put my bank information in the notes so that my clients know where the money should go. I'll talk more about that in a uh, moment when I talk about how you can get paid by your clients. So as of that, that's all the stuff that's gonna be consistent for me from project to project. Once I've got it all set up, I'll save this as invoice, blank, template, and we're good to go. Now, I just did a job. I narrated a documentary for some folks, and so we'll fill in their information. Uh, I'll go into this template, maybe duplicate it in my, uh, in my folder so that I'm not overwriting the same file just to be safe. Let's put in the client name. Oh, they have a great name. If the client provides you an address, you can plug it in here, though it's not necessary. Sometimes they'll request it. 
Sometimes you don't have it. I don't have this one, so we'll just delete it for the sake of cleanliness. The project name, it was called Documentary. Very creative. Next is the day that we send the invoice to the client. The reason why this is important is you want that in your records that you sent it to them on this date. You know when the invoice is due and you know when you sent it to them so that if there's any issues, they lose it, they say they didn't receive it, you have proof, hey, I sent it on this date. Um, so today for me is July 8th, 2023. And then the due date, Standard practice is usually 30 days after the invoice was received, i.e. 30 days after you sent the invoice. I'm not interested in doing the math, so we'll just say August 8th, 2023, if I'm wrong. Well, so be it. It's close enough. Same day next month. Um, and there we go. Now let's get into the meat of the invoice, what we did, and how much they owe us for it. We narrated the documentary, so documentary narration and let's just say for this one we agreed in our contract which i'll have a separate video on soon that i'm just going to do this for a flat fee of 500 dollars. that's neither a standard rate it's just for demonstration purposes uh, so take that for food of thought and we also did a live directed session with them so i'll put a live directed session my rate for live directed sessions at this point in my career is 125 an hour unless it's uh, a specific job. I also ask a one hour minimum with my directed sessions and that's just because for me personally, out of experience, usually I need to block out that much time even if it doesn't take the full hour. So I ask for the client to essentially pay for that time up front so I can reserve it for them and uh, give myself some wiggle room around it. So 125 per hour and prorated after the fact. This session was an hour and a half. So I'll go 1.5, boom, and we're all set up. Now this invoice template has an adjustment section. So let's say I want to give them a discount on the live directed session or something like that. I can plug that discount in here and that way I still have everything noted in the uh, invoice section, the item lines as it were, which is just helpful for tracking things if you want. There was no adjustments on this invoice, so I delete it. Now, this invoice is ready to rock and be sent off to the client for spreadsheet software. I download it as a PDF and email it directly to them or their accounting department. Boom, now I'll talk about a couple other softwares that I find really helpful for invoicing clients. Everything we just talked about should transfer over just fine. The first is any accounting software. I use Xero personally. You can also use QuickBooks or my personal favorite for when I was starting out, Wave. It is a free software to use, free bookkeeping, free accounting, and free invoicing. Unlimited in any currency. It's a fantastic software that I highly, highly, highly recommend. And it's the same deal. It You pull the invoice up, I can customize it up here, put in my name, company name, address, my brand details. I can customize the colors on it. Uh, the client information I can save here. I can have that on file, basically. I can set the automatic payment dates to be 30 days after, so I don't have to constantly do that math. And then down here in the item lines, I can save different services. So I've got my live directed session set up, narration set up, and I can adjust those per invoice if necessary. It's really, really great to have all that streamlined because it just saves you time in the long run. There are a couple other softwares that you can use. There are dedicated freelancer websites that give you full client experiences, full project workflows where you can handle the contract, the item delivery, sending them the audio files, and payment all on the website. Things like HoneyBook or Bonsai. If you're interested, look into those. I haven't personally used them, but some people find them really, really great and help save time. Now, now that we've got the invoicing out of the way, how do you get paid after sending the invoice? There are a few ways you can do it. If you're doing something from a spreadsheet software like Google Sheets, 
you can ask them to pay you via a payment software, things like PayPal, Venmo, Cash App, Stripe, Square, whatever you prefer, you can send them that information separately. You can also invoice directly from those softwares on occasion, which can make uh, things easier for you. The downside to those softwares uh, or those payment services is that they will always ask for a transaction fee. And the transaction fees vary per software or service depending on just whatever they've decided is fair for them. And those fees can range from 1% of the full amount, meaning so for this invoice, 687.50, 1% of that is going to be about six to eight bucks, maybe, uh, which may be somewhat nominal for this. But once you start getting into large numbers, amounts in the thousands, the multiple thousands, even tens of thousands, that 1% fee starts to get pretty substantial, which is the reason why I request that my clients pay me directly from bank to bank. The term for that is an ACH transfer or sometimes a direct debit transfer. The way that I handle those is in my invoices, again, down in this note section that I was talking about earlier, I'll just provide my bank information and it's really simple to do. I'll just put, I'll show you on wave here cause it's a little simpler, but down on these notes, I can just put Wells Fargo, my company name or the account holder name, and then just the account number, the routing number. And if you're working with international clients, they may and on occasion need the wire transfer routing number or the SWIFT key. SWIFT keys are specific bank keys that work from international transfer. I don't know specifically what it is, but it's easy to find. You just Google Wells Fargo, Chase, whatever, Swift keys, and they'll pop up. And I'll put those down in the notes and terms, say use these banking information, use the below banking information to make a direct ACH transfer, please and thank you. If you are not comfortable putting your bank information there, that's totally fine. There are a number of ways that you can work around it. First is to use one of those payment softwares or services that we talked about, PayPal, etc. You don't have to provide anyone with your private bank information if that's not something you're comfortable with. Additionally, you can use a service like Wise. What Wise is, is I highly, highly recommend it, especially if you're working with international currencies. For example, I'm in USD, but I work with people in the EU, in uh, Great British Pound, etc. And those transfer fees really add up once you move to international waters. Uh, so what WISE does is it just helps you to reduce that by giving you bank accounts in those native currency sectors, which then allows you to request money in whatever currency you want and then have that transferred to your native currency or directly to your bank account. So that's helpful if you just want another step of protection in addition to reducing your international fees. WISE. I cannot recommend it enough. Now, if you are going with the uh, payment services, a benefit of these accounting programs like Wave, uh, Zero, QuickBooks, the same deal as PayPal, et cetera, they'll have a fee, but they will also allow your clients to pay directly via the invoice, which may be worth the transaction fee for you because sometimes honestly for me it can be a bit of a headache to have to tell every client how to make an ach transfer so if that transaction fee is worth it for you it's just right here and they can pay via the invoice and it makes it really easy for everyone involved so that's sort of an intro and breakdown as to ha how to handle your invoices how to set it up and then how to collect payments uh, off of them. Again, if you have any questions about this, please feel free to drop me a line below. And of course, I'm not a CPA. I'm not a uh, financial advisor. So take what I say with a grain of salt. Always do some backup research. This is just how I handle it. And uh, you may find a better way for you out there. So until the next one, please be well, and I'll see you there. Toodles.